Welcome back. Okay, so in the last video, we were looking at uh, showing that closed loop control can do much better than open loop control when you have model uncertainty and disturbances. And so to illustrate this, we're looking at a simple model for a car's cruise controller where we're assuming just the simplest dynamics of the car. If I hit the gas, the car speeds up um, instantaneously. Um, if I hit the brakes, the car slows down instantaneously. And we're comparing the open loop and the closed loop controllers. So the open loop control is purely based on a model of the car. It doesn't take measurements and it doesn't feed those measurements back. So the open loop controller, I'm saying, has a model of P equals 2, which means if I hit the gas, the car speeds up by a factor of 2. Um, but in reality, because I have some uncertainty in my model, maybe the true automobile dynamics are only half as responsive. Maybe I'm used to the car being responsive, but my tires are deflated, my wheels are out of alignment, and maybe my fuel injectors need to be cleaned. And so I'm saying that my, my model for the car is inaccurate, and in reality, it's only half as responsive. So the open loop controller would say, take your reference desired reference speed R and just divide it by two. And that's how you pass through the model to get Y equals to R, to get your actual speed to equal the reference. Um, but in the case where my model was bad, and maybe I also have disturbances like these rolling hills, so this is kind of, you know, the magnitude of these rolling hills is the disturbance, open loop is going to be really way far off. It's not going to track the reference speed well at all. It's going to be off by 50% because the model was off by 50%. And the disturbance is going to pass right through the open loop controller because it's not measuring anything. Okay, so we're going to show in MATLAB that this is just really bad. Um, but if you close the loop, if you measure the speed and you apply proportional control to the error between your reference speed and your actual speed, then you can get really good uh, properties of your closed loop system. So by choosing k large, I can make my closed loop y very close to my desired reference speed r, and I can also attenuate um, or reject my disturbances by making 1 over 1 plus k really, really small. So we're going to make this as small as possible, and this as close to 1 as possible by choosing k large. Okay. Now, in a lot of applications, there's a limit to how large K can be. Maybe I'm not driving a Ferrari. Maybe I can't just instantly uh, bump up the RPMs. Maybe there's some dynamics involved. Maybe I'm driving a Civic, and there's actually kind of a lag um, between when I hit the gas and when the car gets going. So we'll add in dynamics later, and we'll add in limits on how big K can be later. But for now, um, I get better reference tracking and better disturbance rejection if I have a big gain, k, in this proportional feedback scheme. Okay? So we're going to code this up in MATLAB and we're going to plot the open loop response and the closed loop response um, with some disturbances. Okay? So let me fire up MATLAB. Okay, so this is a pre made uh, script to run this. It's called cruisecontrol.m. And the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to define a time vector from uh, 0 to 10 in increments of 0.01. So I'm going to integrate my car model for 10 seconds. I'm going to say that my reference speed, my desired reference speed, is 60 miles per hour. So I want my car to go 60 miles per hour, no more, no less. Okay. And the way I get, I, this is actually a vector of 60s as long as time. So I take 60 plus 0 times time. That makes a big 0 vector, and I add 60 to it. And then I'm going to say that I have a pretty large disturbance. Maybe I'm driving through rolling hills in Montana, and every, every couple of seconds, I pick up a plus or minus 10 miles per hour. So I got these big hills, and every couple of seconds, I'm going 10 miles an hour faster or 10 miles an hour slower. Or 10 miles an hour faster, 10 miles an hour slower. Now, this is just a very crude disturbance model, but it gives you the idea uh, of what a disturbance could look like. Okay, remember, my model for the system, my naive kind of um, factory-issued model is just A model equals 2. That says P equals 2. That means that if I hit the gas with 1, I get a Y of 2. Okay? But in reality, my car is actually only has a transfer function of 1. P is equal to 1 here. Okay? So it's not what, what my model says. So U open loop 
is just my reference. So sometimes I call it WR. Um, W is usually a vector of reference, disturbance, and noise. So WR is just the reference. So my open loop control is my reference divided by my model for P. So it's my reference divided by 2. That's my open loop control strategy. Not a very good strategy. And if I compute my output, Y open loop is my true P times U open loop plus disturbances. So why don't I just stop here and I'll plot um, this, this part here. OK, so I'm running the top part. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to plot t by y open loop. Uh, and actually, let's plot t by my reference first. So t by my reference, maybe in black. And then I'll hold on and I'll plot t by my actual y open loop, uh, let's say in red. OK, so you can see here my, well, it's actually a little hard to see, but my desired reference is right up here at the top. It's a black line at the top. If I wanted to, I could say y lim um, 0 to 70, so we can see this a little bit better. OK, so my reference speed is 60 miles per hour. But my open loop controller is doing a really terrible job, OK? Because my model was off by a factor of 2. Instead of tracking at 60 miles per hour, it's tracking at an average of 30 miles per hour. And the disturbances from my rolling hills are passing right through my open loop controller, and my speed is all over the place. It's terrible control law. Um, I would not recommend you get in a car that uses open loop, uh, open loop cruise control. OK, but now let's compute the closed loop. Uh, the closed loop control. And in this example, I'm going to choose a proportional gain of k equals 50. So that's going to get us within about 2% of the reference value. And it's also going to reduce the disturbance by also about a factor of 50. OK, 1 over 51. So I'm choosing k equals 50. And I'm plugging in this formula. In MATLAB, you could actually simulate the system dynamically um, in Simulink or using the feedback command. But for now, I know the, I've derived the closed loop. Um, so I take my closed loop model is the true transfer function, so p equals 1, times k. So this is p true here, pk over 1 plus pk. So pk over 1 plus pk times my reference, plus 1 over pk times my disturbance. There's a pk here. But p is 1 for the true automobile. The true automobile transfer function is just y equals u. OK, so now we're going to plot our closed loop on top. So we're going to plot our reference, our open loop, and our closed loop. And we're going to see how they all compare. OK? Uh, and let's just run this all at once. And I have some nice scripts to make it look a little cooler. But you can see, OK, in black is my reference speed. That's just this line right here. I want to go 60 miles an hour. The disturbance here in the black dashed line, this is the plus or minus 10 miles an hour just from the rolling hill. So I just want to show you the magnitude of the disturbance. Open loop is this red plot. So remember, it's got a mean of 30 because the model was off. And the disturbance is passing all the way through it. So it's doing a terrible job. But the closed loop control, this blue curve, is really, really, really close to the reference. It's, you can see it's wiggling a teeny bit, and it's not perfectly at the reference, but it's within about 2% uh, of the reference value. And the disturbances, this plus or minus 10 miles per hour, has been reduced by a factor of 50, uh, so it's way, way smaller. Um, I could probably zoom in and just to give you an idea so you can see that it's actually not perfect. Right, my, my closed loop is not doing perfect, but it's doing pretty darn good. We're within a couple miles per hour of our desired reference speed. OK, takeaways. There is a huge benefit for doing closed loop feedback control. If, I, if my model is not perfect, open loop is going to be operating on the wrong assumption, and it could be way off for reference tracking. Right? It could be like 50% off or more if my model was bad. If I have disturbances and I don't, I'm not measuring what the actual state of the system is, then open loop is going to let those disturbances pass completely through.
But with closed loop feedback control, I can make my system track references. I can make this close to one, and I can attenuate disturbances. I can make this close to zero, and I can do a really, really good job. So things we'll do in the future are to reduce this steady state error, to make the blue line perfectly aligned with the, the black line, we can also add some integral control. This is proportional, but we can add an integral term, integral of epsilon, so this is proportional integral or PI control, and that's gonna do a good job of closing this gap. We're also going to look at the state, this, the, the case where this transfer function from gas to speed is not so simple, right? In a real car, you hit the gas, you don't just instantly jump to a higher speed, there's some dynamic acceleration and so if we build in a more realistic model of the acceleration and we build in a integral control law, we can do a much better job and also model a more realistic system. Okay, so that's all coming up, but the major takeaway is that closed loop control has huge benefits uh, if your system has uncertainty and disturbances. Okay, thank you.